Hello everyone, Grandmaster Sitka Ernest here and we will look at a very tricky opening line which uh, I every now and then play especially if I want to surprise my opponent. I am a d4 player, usually I play d4 and c4 but every now and then I mix it up and I play the Trampovsky. Now, what is the Trampovsky? It goes like this, d4 knight f6 and now instead of my usual move c4 white can also play here the move bishop g5 and at least to quite original positions for example after the move g6 white can alter the pawn structure with bishop take f6 and very similar after d5 bishop take f6 is there but of course white can also go simply knight f3 or e3 uh, the main move, however, is knight e4, and usually now white replies with the move bishop f4, and these positions actually are also kinda sharp, but my preference lately has gone to the move bishop h4, which leads to even more weird type of positions, and they are very sharp, and if black is not prepared, then black can end up in a lot of trouble, like my opponent in this game, Karina Skepkowska. Uh, Polish international master rated 2 for 20, so quite a strong player. But uh, she obviously didn't uh, suspect that I would play the Trompowski in this game and played a bit careless with move 6, and that landed her already in trouble, as you will see later on. Now, Black, of course, can play very solid here with d5, uh, but the main move is c5. And that's what happened in the game. Now, white wants to chase away the knight on e4 with f3, but instead of retreating, black is countering with move g5. And this leads to some very strange imbalance because it already leads to an asymmetrical exchange in the center f take e4 and g take h4. And now white does have a quite nice center, but black has the bishop pair, and especially the bishop on g f8 can become quite an uh, annoying piece later on when white could end up having trouble with defending the dark squares. White plays e3, solidifying the center, and now here I think my opponent already made a inaccurate move, which handed the initiative over to me. So let us first look at the main move for black in this position. It is bishop h6. And I should say that actually it's not so clear what kings on both sides will do. Especially for black, it's uh, quite unclear what is the safest spot for the, the king. I, th I believe that white king uh, can, uh, can more easily find a, a safe haven, but uh, but sometimes also the king stays in the center, as we will see in uh, some of the lines. After bishop a6, the pawn on e3 is under attack, and white has played, for example, here the move king f2, but I'm more of a fan of the move queen to d3. Now, if black tries to play energetically, which I usually hope that black wants to do that, uh, he or she plays move queen b6, targeting the pawn on b2. Now, of course, white could simply defend the pawn or push it to b3, but it's much more strong to fight for the initiative with move knight a3. And now, if black doesn't take on b2, then white just plays the move knight c4, and then queen b6 looks rather silly. So therefore, black more or less is forced to take the pawn on b2. But actually this lands, in, uh, lands black in a lot of trouble. White plays rook b1, the queen goes to a2, and now the very strong resource queen to c3. And it appears that the queen on a2 is in a very bad way. The queen should immediately leave and go back to e6, but now with the move d5, White is attacking the queen on e6, but also the rook on h8. Therefore, queen f6 is forced, and after the exchange on f6, e6, white goes knight b5, targeting the c7 square. 
Black can defend it in two ways. Let's first look at knight a6 because it leads to a rather funny position, I believe. After knight a6, we give a check on d6, king f8, and now we take on a6. And after b a6, there's knight f5, bishop g5, and after d6, I wish black good luck finding a constructive move. It's a terrible position in which black bishops have zero moves and I don't see how black will untangle from this position. So therefore um, knight a6 is probably already losing. King d8 is slightly better but white has a huge advantage after let's say knight d6, rook f8 and now simply king f2. Even though black is two pawns up, white pieces have such nice squares available while black's Pawn structure is an absolute disaster. So, bishop h6, yeah, I'm, I'm quite confident uh, to meet this with the move queen d3, and now I believe queen b6 is not the right way to go. But either way, I believe that white has a very attractive position here. Still, bishop h6 is a lot better than the move queen b6 as was played in the game. Because now white still doesn't defend the b2 pawn but plays the move knight c3. Asking black what to do with the queen. If queen b2 then now there's knight to d5 and in order to defend the c7 square black has to play king d8 and I don't believe it's all that great to already give up castling at move 8. After rook b1, queen a3 yeah, actually, uh, after in this position, rook b1, I found 13 games and all 13 games were won by white. And that's not only because the position is uh, better for white objectively, I believe it's just simply practically a very tough position for black to play. So after queen a3, I would just develop with knight f3. Actually, many games continued here with queen h5, but I believe that fast development uh, uh, brings black even more problems. Uh, white has an advantage and, uh, and uh, white has a very easy development and this all at very small price black only is one pawn up. So therefore taking on b2 I believe is too dangerous but if you have to play the move e6 and don't take on b2 then probably the move queen b6 was quite useless. In the game I played knight f3 and now again I think queen take b2 is critical and it leads to some crazy lines. They are favorable to white. I do believe that it would be good to have a look at the lines that follow after queen take b2. I didn't delve into in them too deeply. But let me show you some of the lines that I found. White can go knight b5 here. And now, since the queen on b2 is in trouble, black does best to give this check on b4. When after knight d2, queen a5, here white can play the move c3. And this is actually what I plan to do in the game. When I did have trouble evaluating the positions that result from the move a6. White now can play knight c4 when black takes on b5 and this is a queen sacrifice but what black does get a couple of pieces for it. So here we have a position where white has a queen and black has three minor pieces and this is very tough to evaluate probably also for very strong players but I believe that in this position the queen is uh, better. I came to this conclusion after analyzing a bit with an engine. But to make this decision unprepared during the game, that would be very tough. Also, why doesn't have to go c3 in this position? Later on, I found a better move. It's d takes c5. It's a bit unnatural to ruin your pawn structure in such a way, but there are uh, good tactical reasons for uh, playing this move. The most obvious is bishop takes e5, but actually it leads to a losing position. Although the lines that follow are far from obvious. After queen h5, the engine gives white already a plus 3 advantage, but 
I had the trouble uh, to realize why white is winning after bishop b4. But before I continue with bishop b4, let me show you some of the other lines. Defending the bishop on c5 is very difficult, but for example, the move b6 runs into knight c7 check. So that's not an obvious uh, option. Also, the bishop cannot retreat since there is a discovered check with knight d6 check and the white queen is hitting the black queen on a5. So, but the move I had the most trouble with was bishop b4. How should white continue here? Well, apparently c3 is right and after bishop takes c3, now the only move that gives white a winning position is castling queenside. And that's just a very difficult move to make, of course. Uh, white's king doesn't look at all safe here, but uh, apparently um, the knights are protecting all the important squares and black cannot avoid losing material. One of the lines that I found that queen before and now knight to c4 when black better brings the king to safety a3 queen b3 and now rook d3 when black has to take on c4 and after rook c3 also black has to take on e4 and after bishop d3 the bishop and knight cooperate really nicely attacking h7, queen to e3 is forced, king b1 and here black is just completely lost very very difficult line of course to see but with the help of the engines we can find this kind of beautiful lines yeah black was not prepared to take on b2 decided to develop but that meant that white just got a very um, comfortable position with good control over the center and also uh, ahead in development, also not unimportant. Queen d2, d6 and here a castle queenside. And black here played the move bishop d7. It's very difficult here to give black advice, for example moving the knight to c6, white can push with d5 and after knight a5, e5 Black's king is still in the center and the pawns on e5 and d5 are very strong. Black cannot really take them because then white's pieces will get activated. So in the game black settled for bishop d7 and here I also pushed with d5, knight a6 and e5 and white has a very large advantage. The rest of the game I don't think it's too important, I will show it to you in high speed. Black castle queen side and I supported my center even more with e4, f6, ed6, queen d6, bishop c4, ed5, knight d5. That's a wonderful knight on d5. Black does still have the bishop pair, but also the black pawn structure is not so great. White will take this pawn on h4, the next move. So knight c7, knight h4, knight d5, bishop d5. White is a pawn up and with the better position. Even though later on we get a position with opposite color bishops. But these are far from draw. In fact, actually with such a bishop on d5, white is really happy that there are opposite color bishops. Since the bishop on e7, it's pretty useless, it doesn't uh, really defend anything. So, and black is also in no uh, position to attack me on the dark square. So the rest of the game went as follows. Went as follows. Rook f2, rook d5, knight to c6, rook f5, queen to a6 to cover the b5 square. And now after g4, queen c7, rook f3, and this rook is on the way to the queen side to harass the black king. Rook e5, c4, giving more support to the bishop on d5. Rook b3, and th with this move I am trying to create more weaknesses in black's position. It would be great if I could 
persuade like to play the move b7 b6 as happened in the game yeah so rook b3 rook b3 b6 and now this bishop on d5 is increasing in strength queen d2 so the more pawns are that are on the dark squares the stronger this bishop on d5 becomes so queen d2 rook d5 and here i use another pawn to target the b6 weakness white is threatening to play a5 so bishop d6 king b1 queen d8 and now a5 bishop c7 and another important defender of the black king got exchanged queen a5 king a7 queen a4 yeah now this pawn on b7 is gone white has all these light squares available like like c6 that's that's of course would be completely crushing so black has to play queen c8 and rook f3 white is trying to Invade black's position from the other side and e5 is the decisive breakthrough after which I had this nice combination rook f8 black cannot take on f8 because then queen d7 check is forcing a checkmate so bishop d8 and now queen d8 rook d6 check king d6 rook d7 and here my opponent resigned the position after queen d7 Bishop b7, king b7 is quite hopeless. So, this Trampowski line is extremely tricky. So, instead of the natural bishop f4, I think it's worth having a look at three bishop h4. And this main line, which many people play with, for black actually, with c5, f3, g5. I think there's a lot of music there for black this uh, for white it pays uh, a lot uh, it gives a lot of reward analyzing these positions